Welcome to this quick tour of the research behind our paper, published in the Fire Safety Journal. In the paper, we explore whether rates of fire in the home are distributed evenly through society, or whether some groups are more likely than others to experience a fire at home. Although links between fire rates and various factors have been identified in the past, many of the previous studies are relatively old. In the UK, rates of dwelling fire are dropping rapidly, having fallen 39% in the decades to 2012. We wanted to explore whether there are still social differences in the distribution of fire today, and to do that, we collaborated with the West Midlands Fire Service to take a detailed look at some of their records. We started by calculating the rate of fire in each small neighbourhood, and expressing that rate as a percentage of the rate that would be expected if fire were distributed evenly throughout society. We found that some areas had over five times the expected rate. On the map, the dark red represents neighbourhoods with more than four times the expected rate, and those are concentrated in inner city areas. For each neighbourhood, we identified a range of potential predictive variables, taken mostly from the UK census and from government indices of deprivation. Our analysis began with some simple correlation. 24 of the variables that we looked at had strong correlation with fire rates, and these broadly fell into three groups. The first group consisted of factors that are generally related to social and economic deprivation, with unemployment having a particularly strong association. In the graph, we've grouped our 1,680 neighbourhoods into 10 equal groups arranged by employment deprivation. The blue bar shows the mean rate of fire for the group. If fire were distributed evenly, all the bars would reach the orange line at 100. As you can see, the higher the level of employment deprivation, the higher the rate of fires in the home. The second group related to the proportion of people from black African and black Caribbean backgrounds. As with the previous graph, you can see that areas of a greater proportion of African and Caribbean residents experience more fires in the home. The third group was the number of people living alone and aged under 65 years, which you can see in the left-hand graph. Interestingly, in areas where there are a large number of older people living alone, rates of fire were actually lower, and this is shown in the right-hand graph. Many of the variables that we looked at were related and exhibited collinearity, that is, they correlated with each other. We wanted to try and simplify things and see if we could find a smaller number of unrelated variables that would explain the differences between areas. To do this, we used principal component analysis. This way, we identified five or so key variables that represented most of the difference between neighbourhoods. We then used ordinary least squared reg regression to test what effect these variables had on rates of house fire. We found that just three variables could explain 32% of the variance in rates of fire at the small neighbourhood level. Given the strong role of human behaviour in the starting of fires, this is a surprisingly high figure. The three variables we used were the proportion of people from black African and black Caribbean backgrounds, the proportion of people living alone and aged under 65, and the proportion of people who have not worked for over five years. These three variables show very little relationship to each other, and they all have a relatively similar influence on rates of fire. In conclusion then, there continues to be considerable inequality in the way that accidental dwelling fires are distributed through society. At small area level, just three variables can explain 32% of the variance in rates of accidental dwelling fire. Principal component analysis has proved to be a very valuable way of simplifying complex data sets. These techniques will prove to be useful in identifying areas of focus for future fire prevention interventions. You can find out more about this research and our follow-up work at www.communitiesandfire.org.uk.